Cindy here. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm excited to talk about when you go from being adored to ignored. Who has been there? I'd be curious. Have you been in a situation if that it started out really amazing and then all of a sudden it's it's it, the person is totally different it's totally changed okay so there's a reason for that um of course that's why i'm having this conversation with you guys and it's it's interesting so there are so maybe you're maybe you've gotten involved with somebody or you know in the beginning and they really see you and they're supportive, like the sky is bluer, you're seeing, you know, rainbows, butterflies. It's, it's really, really great. And, you know, all of a sudden, every day's brighter, you're happier, and you feel this, this loving, deep connection. Super awesome, right? And it's, you know, it's like, Maybe you haven't felt this way before, maybe you have, but it's this, it's this feeling of truly, truly being seen. So this is the danger point too. I'm gonna explain that in a minute. And your communication is great, all of a sudden it's awesome. And then all the then things start to shift. Now this could be a quick shift or it could be a little bit of a decline. Typically, it's the second thing. And what I notice is right about the three month mark is where this starts to happen. Now, this doesn't only happen in dating relationships. This can happen in friendships. It can happen in, you know, business. You know, you could, you could be, you know, have hired an employee or work with somebody who's really, really great and showing up really amazing. And then all of a sudden, once it hits a certain point, then things start to fall through the cracks, right? So why does this happen? <laughs> well, there's a couple reasons. The number one reason is that that person can't sustain more. They just can't sustain more. There are some people, I don't know if you've ever heard the term in love with being in love. There are some people that are really, really great in the beginning, in the romance stage. And when things start to get real, all of a sudden, they're not, they get bored, they're not good anymore, and they're not really good at partnering. So how do we see the signs? How do you avoid it? Um, I'm not, I do believe in guarding your heart in, in every love situation to a certain degree, but you need to open your heart in order to receive love and to give it a chance. Because if you don't, then you'll never actually fully feel and you'll never actually receive the benefits. And so if you look at this like, well, I should, you know, not open myself up until they really prove themselves to me. The problem with that is you're not gonna really see because you're you're gonna be so conscious of guarding yourself. So I want you to 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 understand that and look at it you know do you have patterns of going zero to a hundred so then you might want to pace yourself but secondly if you get involved with someone where it's really really great in the beginning he's adoring and then you know what happens is the switch right and i think many of us and i was talking about this before I don't know, maybe last week, that switch, you can almost feel it, right? You can feel it when somebody settles in or they start to back away. Now, there's a difference between settling into a relationship and backing away. Because settling in is somebody that is getting used to you and still showing up 
in the relationship. So there's that piece. Um, what do you do when you start to fill the pool back? First, the first thing you do the first time you see it, you observe and you look at, so what's happening in their life? Is there something different? Did they have a little bit of extra pressure this week? Did something happen? Because we all want to try to justify it, right? And then if you continue to see a steady decline, which is usually what happens in, which is what happens in these situations, then that's the point. And this is where the dangerous slippery slope comes in. That's the point where you have the conversation and you say, look, you know, what's up? I noticed, you know, I'm noticing something really, really different here. And that's where you actually evaluate what, you know, what, how was this person showing up before? What did they want that they've gotten from me or in the situation? What's causing this? Is there, you know, and and what's causing the difference in behavior so and you can tell if this is happening and they're actually not able to fully show up and partner with you you know partnering is different than this la 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 love right you know the the la la land part is really fun and the real life stuff is, are you going to be there when, you know, when the kid's sick or the dog needs to go to the vet or I have, you know, I have a abnormal pap or I have a medical procedure or, you know what I mean? So it's like partnering's different. Partnering isn't always these high highs and low lows. Partnering becomes a little a little bit boring at times and you know More on it. It builds a deeper level of trust So what do you do you have a conversation you say hey, I'm noticing this What's up? and at that point in time That's when and and you know it in your gut. That's when you say, you know, I get the feeling something's changed and I'm looking for something that's real and sustainable and based on based on what I'm experiencing we're on different pages so you leave you disconnect you you send you you <laughs> you, you you get out of there why do you do this? You do it then because you don't want to put yourself through the torture of going crazy. Because during this time is where, you know, what happens oftentimes with women will go, well, what did I do wrong? Is everything okay? Um, and they'll start to do more work, which ends up pushing them further away. And then it ends up in this lonely, sad cycle. And the, you know, the looping that happens in the brain is like the looping of an addict. So it's the obsession that happens. You know, you're thinking about this person and then you're like, you know, almost, you're not stalking them, but you kind of are. You're, you're, orbits around them you're 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 in their space and you're looking for every opportunity to get that fixed to what it was like in the beginning which the beginning was an illusion it's like you're walking in the desert and you see the illusion of this big beautiful ocean which isn't doesn't exist right so you have that conversation, you cut it off. Why don't people do that? Because oftentimes in these situations, there might have been a person that they felt seen by for the first time. And trust that 
if you were seen like that, that there's somebody else that's going to see, see you and multiply that by a hundred. They may have a different style about them. It might not be as romantic and flowery. And you can also get a deeper look at what is it that I want from these situations? What is it that I don't want? What are the signs that this could be happening and happen again? And that's when you move forward. So I'm not going to tell you to, you know, pull some trick up your sleeve and get them to re-engage. You could do that and that might be temporary, but oftentimes when people, when a person is showing up like this, they don't have the capacity to grow a relationship. They don't have the skill set. They don't, um, they could be addicted to, you know, the beginning of love. And oftentimes they, this person may not even realize it. So if you, you felt things in the beginning and you're like, gosh, I'm beating myself up. It's like, look, I took this chance. What would I do differently next time? What are my tendencies? Okay, I'm going to move slower. I'm going to date more than one person at a time. And I'm, I'm going to trust and love. I know that this came towards me. I'm attracting this and even better. And, you know, if you've ever been involved with a narcissist, um, any form of toxic relationship, especially narcissists, there is, this is a very, very common phenomenon. There's a lot of charm. There's a lot of connectedness, doting, loving in the beginning, but that person doesn't have the ability to go to the next level. So I hope this helps. Let me know, have you ever been in a situation like this? Put yes. Is this something you're struggling with right now? Let me know, yes, yes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments section um, what they are so that I can support you and connect with you on here. If you are watching this right now and you know somebody that could use to see this, please share, share the love. If you're seeing me on YouTube, um, click the subscribe button so that you can get, if you like it, um, you can get all my videos for when we, um, when we put them out multiple times a week, as well as, um, you know, hit the little like button if you like me. So sending you guys so much love and I'm excited to see you turn the corner and really receive love. So remember, if you are protecting yourself too much, if your walls are too high, then you can't actually receive what you really desire in your love life. Okay, have an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye.